soil itself contains within it many, many things that can help the investigator work out what has happened at a crime. A week ago, we buried the packet of drugs at this particular location. I've taken a new team here today and they're tasked with seeing if they can find out where these drugs might be buried. As we're approaching the scene, we're looking around for particular clues as to where the perpetrator may have come in. So we're looking for vegetation that might be flattened, disturbances to the soil, maybe a raised profile where there's material that's been buried beneath it. So there is still some signs that there's been some disturbance there. So the first thing would be to secure this scene. After the tape has been secured around the crime scene, the next thing we have to do is to make sure that we've decided on the appropriate route in and to put down the protective plates so that we don't stand or contaminate the crime scene in any way. We make sure we've got the full crime suits, the scene is protected from us contaminating it with anything and also protects us from any potential contamination that may have been left behind by the perpetrator who's been at the scene. We wear gloves because we don't want to shed any DNA onto the crime scene. We can see a little bit of raised grass here. So what we need to do is carefully lift that turf off and see if there has been a disturbance to that natural soil profile. The mock scene of crime is an approach that we use to carry out research. Because as you can imagine, when you have a real case you cannot do any testing or any experimentation of any of the methodologies at that time. What we're trying to test here is the use of microbial soil forensic science. So that's the use of the microorganisms in the soil as indicators of where someone may have buried something or where someone may have stood. Tell me when to stop, Renata. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Do you take it up in fours again? Or? No, you would actually do this as an archaeological dig. In okay. reality, you would dig down <laughs> and you would take samples every centimetre you went down. But we're only Back in the laboratory, what we'll do is we're going to extract the DNA from this soil. In fact, you know, in a teaspoonful of soil, you've got more microorganisms than you have people on the planet. So there we've got a wealth of information. And what we do with the DNA is we run it through a next generation sequencer. So these approaches give us a fingerprint and we can compare the fingerprint we've got with the contextual soil that we know was at the scene with the fingerprint that we get on the offender's boots or on the spade that's been left behind in, in the boot of the car. It is a relatively new method. It's used in the Netherlands at the moment, and I think that's about the only country in the world that it is used in court. So what we want to do is we want to test it within the different soils that we have here in the United Kingdom before we use it in court. It's a very exciting time to be part of this new wave of soil forensic science. <laughs>